Hi guys and welcome to today's show. Today we are going to be reviewing this beautiful watch from IWC, uh, a very unique fully automatic timepiece uh, with some features that are just make this really a one of a kind. Now uh, before we get into that I should do my wristwatch check. I am of course pulling a Schwarzkopf. I'm about to get on the treadmill so I need, uh, I'm, I'm using the G-Shock to time things. I'm also timing a couple of other things, alarms, that kind of stuff. And then, of course, I've got my trusty Tudor Day date on the Milano Ostrich, which I'm really enjoying and I just reviewed in the previous video. Um, so, yeah, pulling a Schwarzkopf uh, purely out of necessity and also because I'm a bit strange and eccentric, but, you know, I really don't care. <laughs> it's just how it is. Um, Anyway, so yeah, back to the IWC, oh my god, what what a, you know, I, I tell you the truth, when my friend Alwyn uh, emailed me about this, I, I, I gotta admit, I wasn't that excited, I was like, okay, yeah, fair enough, but actually looking at it in more detail, finding a little bit more about the, the engineer line, uh, it's actually quite a his, historic line, I, I, I really didn't know that much about it, I'm not into the, the, the Genta style watches, but this particular piece really, really surprised me because of its qu quite unique blend of features. Um, in fact, actually, enough talking. Let's let's switch perspectives now and have a proper, closer look at this uh, very special timepiece. Today we are reviewing the IWC three two three nine Engineer. Now the Engineer uh, the full reference number is IW323906. This particular version of the engineer comes in three different dial colors. Uh, this was released in 2013. It's really a re-release, uh, a kind of redesign of uh, quite an historic line by IWC. And, and when we think of IWC, we normally think of the Portuguese, uh, the Portofino, or their flight, you know, the Fliegers, the iconic aviation watches, uh, especially in the post, <laughs> to, in the post uh, House of Cards world, the, the famous Frank Underwood as well. So, you know, that's what we normally think of IWC. This is a slightly kind of overlooked line, uh, but hugely important to them all the same. Now, the engineer line was first introduced in 1955. They started off as a kind of quite a dressy little number, I think in about a 36 millimeter size. And then in 1976, uh, the famous uh, Gerard Genta, uh, who I do apologize in the previous video, I butchered his name. I kept saying Gentra. <laughs> I think my dyslexic brain was was thinking of the, the, the urban gentry and mixing his name up. Anyway, he redesigned it uh, in the 70s which was the reference uh, 1832 and I think there was only about 500 or 550 of those made that become extremely sought after. Uh, Gerard Gent of course is the famed uh, Swiss watch designer actually his father I think was uh, I think his father was Italian uh, hence the the Italian surname and his mother was Swiss, if I remember correctly. But anyway, I certainly respect uh, his designs and his contribution to uh, horology. But uh, I'm not, I've got to be honest, guys, I'm not a big fan. I've, I've never been particularly taken by the Nautilus that he designed or the, or the, or the APs. They just, you know, they just don't do it for me. I'm, I'm just being honest. Uh, however, this is something a little different. Now, he didn't actually design this watch. This was uh, released, I think he passed away in 2011. So this was released in 2013. It's inspired by his design. And, and they have done a, a, an absolutely fantastic job. We'll, we'll get into that in just a moment. So he's mostly famed for uh, his Patek Philippe Nautilus. Uh, I think that he did a Cartier, the, the Pasha de Cartier, I think. Uh, what else has he done? Uh, I think he's done an Omega as well, Constellation. I might be wrong about that. So he's done a lot of, you know, quite iconic watches. And uh, this is very, very much based on his design, obviously. Uh, and it just has that, that Genta and I'm, I say Genta, not Gentra. <laughs> it has that gen, Genta. I almost did it again. It does have that Genta DNA. I mean, it's 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 very obvious. There's something very 70s, but yet modern about it. It, it does remind me of of uh, I don't know why it, may, it reminds me of Silent Running, that that science fiction film. Uh, 
a quite obscure but fantastic science fiction film. Anyway, I'm I'm going I'm rambling, but so it does have a kind of seventies look about it, yet very nicely uh, brought up to date. So we have a completely stainless steel case, and as I mentioned, it comes in three flavors. Uh, we have uh, all the same case and everything, with, but with different colored dials. This particular one is a lovely uh, white dial, very crisp, matte. Uh, with these beautiful little applied rose gold markers and hands. It brings a kind of dressy element to the piece. This redesign was, they, they made them smaller. The, the, the previous engineers got quite big uh, in, 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 the, in the years previous to this really release. They were getting up to like the 46 millimeter size. Uh, IWC decided to, to bring them back down and this is to 40. Uh, and it's a kind of a dressy, sporty hybrid. They did a clever thing. They were trying to make a watch that was a great everyday piece, but had the robustness of a sports watch. This has a modified ETA, which we'll discuss in just a moment. But you think, oh, well, well what's clever about that? Well, actually, they position this watch with its price in a de very deliberate part of the market. You know, if we look at a lot of the Genta, the iconic Genta watches, like the Nautilus, those are really expensive watches. Whereas this, uh, we're talking about six, just over six grand brand new, uh, and they are holding their value quite well on the used market. I have to I have to mention that before I forget. Let's just quickly get an idea of the dimensions uh, before we continue to talk about this. Now I will point out, um, I've got sellotape on the end, so it's not gonna damage uh, the, the watch itself. It's got a 40 millimeter case, the lovely thickness of only 10 millimeters, very, very slender. I just absolutely love that. Now, lug to lug, now it's a bit difficult because the lugs, it is an integrated bracelet, but we're looking at, again, 45, which is a really, really nice size. There is no lug width because it's integrated, but we'll discuss that in a minute. So the size is a lot more conservative, a lot more actually in keeping with the mid-century sizes so it's and, and it's perfect because these days we're seeing sizes go back you know the the mid noughties trend of, of monstrous <laughs> ginormous watches is receding back to a more kind of sophisticated elegant dressy age uh, so i think actually this is this is really a nice sweet spot so as i said we've got uh, a fully stainless steel and this includes the bracelet which is really fantastic we've got a little push button deployment there with a the signed bracelet all integrated these fantastic links I'm not quite sure how these work uh, but the really solid construction with these very nicely done you can see it catching the light these beveled edges beautifully beautifully done screw down case back of course just very plainly sign you know uh, nothing over the top I just can't get over how thin it is it's a really lovely thin watch and look how those the those lugs they angle the integrated bracelet down and, and very typical Genta-esque. My favorite features has got to be the crown guards. Absolutely stunning. Uh, we've got a lovely little signed... I'm not, so, not sure if that will focus. Is it focusing? Come on. Lovely little signed crown there. And I just adore the, these fantastic angular shapes. It's very kind of retro chic. The bezel is definitely the most in keeping with the traditional engineer looks of the of the Genta age with with these five little it's kind of porthole look with these five little drilled holes just to just to um, just to finish off that scientific kind of industrial look that it's got we have obviously we have a flat sapphire glass it's a anti-reflective coating all the rest of it uh, very very flat and it sits flush with, with the bezel there beautifully Again, they, they just look at these these beautifully machined, uh, finished, beveled edges. Even on the on the on the crown guards, it's just it's very subtle. Hardly notices it, but it plays with the light beautifully. The edges are so crisp and clean. With these, we have these high polished bits, uh, contrast with the lovely matte finish on these sections and. Uh, it's just, it's quite y you spend ages just looking at the finish and I, when I first unboxed this my initial impressions were you know the quality is there it felt so it really does feel amazingly solid feels as refined as it looks to be honest and I love it it's it's gorgeous let's look at the the dial a bit closer there it looks deceptively simple but yet we have uh, various layers going on here various sections we have an inner circle and everything is beautifully proportioned out 
there's nothing there that should, doesn't need to be there. We have this kind of inner bezel little step with the minute markers. And then these beautiful plied owl markers with loom in the center. The hands are really are gorgeous. I mean, actually, let me just, it's got a screw down crown, obviously. Let me just uh, move the hands so we can have a better look. Um, if I just, if I just move the hands a second they're semi skeletonized and then we've got loom on the end obviously it's hackable and, and hand wind and all that we'll get into the movement in just a moment the hands are definitely one of my favorite features if you if you see the hands are slightly there's a they're slightly curved they curve downwards there's a, quite a nice three-dimensional aspect to them very very small paddle esque second hand I love the hands. I think they're, they, they're, they're very elegant. Um, and I, I love the fact they match the hour markers with the uh, rose gold gilded tone of them. IWC, uh, and I, God, I'm going to I'm gonna absolute butcher this, but Schaffhausen, Schaff, Schaffenhausen, Schaff, Schaffhausen. I, I apologize, I do not speak a word of German. Uh, <laughs> anyway, sign, sign Swiss made at the bottom. Absolutely beautiful. Little. Uh, date window at three o'clock you know just just quite simply done but but very elegant it's gorgeous I, I, I love the dial I really love the dial in fact uh, you know I'm not a big white dial guy but uh, actually this this probably is the most elegant I like it more than the, the, the black dial actually just screwed that crown back in very nice action to it very smooth uh, threads beautifully as you'd uh, as you'd expect originally designed for engineers uh, and they had uh, anti-magnetic cases in fact the, this does too this has a is completely anti-magnetic shielded as a Faraday cage inside the only thing that ex exposes the the cage is the actual date so the only gap in the uh, anti-magnetic shielding is the date window it's to watch DNA is still present even in this kind of smaller dressy version which is I think is really really cool I love that. So we got the ETA 2892, the top grade version, which is with hackable and hand winding. Obviously, we got a 20. It's a 21 joule movement, uh, 42 hour power reserve. Very very common movement. We see this in a lot of watches. Uh, I think it's the same movement as in the young hands just the other day. But what is unusual, and it did create a bit of a fuss when this was released, is a movement uh, that common in a watch this expensive now it was deliberate what iwc i think were trying to do they were trying to keep costs down and people people were a little bit surprised but the benefits are it's very cheap and easy to service it's not going to cost an absolute fortune i think they were trying to make a, a more affordable genta-esque alternative to the nautilus to the um what's the other one um the ap's of this world and it's a very, very clever thing. And I think if you want to go with a Genta-esque or Genta-descended, um, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a bit like horological royal blood. It's, not a, it's a bit of a mongrel. It's not, not, not a full aristocrat. <laughs> it's a bit of a, you know, it's got that pedigree in it, but uh, it's not, you know, it hasn't got a title. It's not the uh, not actually designed by Genta, but you know what I'm trying to say. It's it's very sleek, very elegant. If you want a uh, a Gerard Genta designed watch, but you don't want to fork out huge fortune for an AP or a Nautilus, then this is the alternative. I like that because actually I have two friends that have APs, and I don't know, you know, I I can't speak for all AP owners, but. Uh, one of them had a fault in his, had to f fix it, cost an absolute fortune to fix. You could have bought a whole new watch with the with the repair costs. And the other friend recently had his serviced and again, cost an absolute fortune. Well, at least with this, you know, uh, you could wear this day to day. And when it does come time to service or if there is a problem, uh, it's going to be quite economical to fix. Also, you know, the ETA uh, 2892 is a very well proven movement. It's one of those workhorse, uh, very, very reliable. Anyway, so another thing is we, unlike a dress watch, we do have loom. And in fact, we should just quickly change to a loom shot. So let's just do that right now. And as you can see, very responsive, clean, crisp loom. We've got a double uh, markers at the top so you can easily tell where the 12 o'clock is. Uh, slightly difficult to tell between the minute and the hour, but um, at first glance. But actually, 
yeah, it's 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 there's not much differentiation between the two, but it, it does its job. You just have to look a little bit lo longer. But uh, even the tiny little second hand, which is very very thin, uh, works wonderfully. And even at the three o'clock, you'll see that tiny little bit of applied loom uh, where the date window is. That's why it's kind of dark there. But uh, even that works well. So really great loom, very responsive and uh, equally applied. Anyway, back to the studio. We've got to talk about this integrated bracelet a bit. Uh, the water resistance is 12 bar, so you know, you're not, you don't have to worry about it too much. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend diving or anything like that. You can uh, wash the dishes and not, not worry about it. So let's discuss the integrated bracelet. It's done incredibly well. In fact, let me just close it so you can just ha see. It tapers beautifully the way it connects. Uh, to the actual case, the head of the watch is, is done very, very well. And it's very indicative of the Genta style. I think, uh, I can't actually think of any of his watch watches that don't have an integrated. It's, it's like his signature kind of design. There are obviously watches that he's done, designed, but uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember any that didn't have integrated bracelets. And, they, and they've done it incredibly well. One negative you could say is it's integrated bracelet. It would be lovely to wear this on a strap, but uh, I think you can remove this. I, guys, if you know uh, if, if there are straps out there for these particular watches, let, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to uh, love to see a picture of one of these on a strap, actually. It's a, both a negative and a positive. I mean, obviously the negative is that you're stuck with this bracelet, but the positive is that it's, it's beautifully done. It's absolutely gorgeous. So let's just quickly give it a wrist shot. So there we go. Now, uh, being a 40 millimeter on my tiny little wrist, it wears beautifully. It's so slender, uh, it would work really well as a dress watch. And I think actually it's so modern and sleek. It is very dressy, you know, and I think that extra little bit of um, rose gold on, on, on the markers does make it a little bit more dressy. A slick watch, it's subtle, it's not screaming out loud, got a lot of matted, polished finish so it's not screaming out but does you know those little beveled edges do catch and play with the light beautifully as does the the face and the hands um, and as I said the the angle of the hands kind of plays with the light as well very refined considering at, at its core it is quite a tooly sports watch but um, it's a very clever watch by IWC and I think a home run definitely the popularity of these might come might increase uh, especially with smaller watches coming back it feels so solid it's beautifully made the, the finishing it's absolutely gorgeous I really really like it and I thought I wouldn't I, I never even considered looking at it but until you get it in the flesh and you really you know I, I've had a, this watch for a week or so and and I've got to say a big thank you to my friend Alwyn who lent this in and trusted me with his uh, with his beautiful IWC here but I'm gonna be very sad to see it go back it's it's a stunning stunning watch it's remarkably tasteful um, I would definitely consider one now which <laughs> which is terrible because I don't need more watches to consider but it's got a lot of charm to it, a lot of things that are that are, that are special to it. Um, my favourite being the the, the crown guards, uh, and actually I do like this white dial. It's 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 fun, but without being uh, over the top. It's elegant, without being too loud. It's it's just a really great all round. You know, I, to quote what. IWC said it's the every occasion watch. As a sound engineer, you know the anti-magnetic uh, properties would be really great uh, to wear on the job as well. Because you know when you're dealing with so much recording equipment, especially speakers that have huge magnetic fields or, or any kind of scientific, you know it's a great work watch. And because it's an ETA, you're not going to have to worry about it. So uh, fantastic! I think it's um, a, a beautiful hybrid of luxury of dress uh, it is really the all-round you know it's just a solid three-hander with a date and, and, and every occasion watch I mean you could almost argue that you don't really need any other watches it's a it's a beta and a dress watch it's it's a very difficult thing to pull off and I think IWC have done it marvelously and it's a really great way to buy into that kind of gender heritage without having to spend a lot of money on a Nautilus or um, or an AP, which for me, you know, 
and not being a big fan of either of those, it's the first kind of Genta watch that I can, Genta-esque watch that I can really, I can really like, I, that I do really like, you know, um, his watches do have a bit of a Marmite effect, but some people adore it, other people don't. Okay guys, I'm going to wrap it up there, let's take it back to the studio. Okay, welcome back guys. So, in summary, a very unique piece indeed, made exquisitely well. You guys can argue in the, com in the comments, a lot of you will be scoffing at this and saying, oh, you know, six grand for an ETA, are you out of your mind? But this, that's the thing about this watch, it's core strengths, the, the, the most, the things I love about this watch the most are also some of its biggest negatives. For example, the integrated bracelet. It's a beautiful bracelet, very, very well made, uh, but at the same time, you guys know I'm a NATO strap guy. I like changing my straps, leather straps, rubber straps, all the rest of it. One of its best features is also one of its kind of biggest negatives. The same can be said about the ETA. Now, yes, it's very affordable to service, it's reliable, it's all the rest of it, and it keeps the cost down. But a lot of you will be thinking, well, is it worth paying all that money? And actually, I had a quick look at the used market. They're holding their price very, very well. I think it's a clever thing what they've done. They've made it more accessible or easier to get a Genta-esque watch without having to pay the big money of a Nautilus, which I think is great. Personally, I think the ETA kind of suits its more everyday tooly, you know, you're not going to have to worry about huge servicing costs and all the rest of it like you would in an AP. And I quite like that. And again, you know, the simultaneous positives and negatives, it really depends on how you look at it and what you value. Uh, in terms of accuracy, I must admit, you know, the, the this particular ETA, I think its average is plus minus four seconds all the way up to plus or minus 15, thereabouts. I found it to be incredibly accurate. Uh, whatever IAWC are doing, they're doing it very well. Uh, I'm, it's only gained a few seconds in a day, so in terms of accuracy, it's really bang on. For me, I actually prefer the ETA. It's, a, it's, it's just uh, less of a worry, you know, but I can understand a lot of you might be a bit dubious about spending this much money uh, on what is essentially a, a kind of luxury ETA. But anyway, you know, that's that's an argument that is as old as time and, and uh, you know, us watch guys are going to be debating <laughs> that for, forever and ever. But it's a great watch. I absolutely adore it. You know, and this is coming from a guy who's not into the whole Genta style watches, who's not even into white-faced watches. If this had been a GMT, I would have probably, you know, I'd probably be buying this instead of the Pepsi. Um, in fact, I'm going to go now and look and see if they do a GMT version of this because I think it actually would complement my collection very, very well. It's unlike anything I have already. And I think in summary, it's what IWC has said. It's the every occasion watch. It's the ultimate every occasion watch. A spark of genius or an absolute uh, travesty <laughs> as for you to decide. You can't actually fathom just how beautifully made it is until you see it in the flesh and uh, again thank you so much to my good friend Alwyn for allowing me this opportunity to review his watch. I'm going to be very sad to see it go but anyway I'm going to wrap it up there absolutely pure class really been uh, kind of converted to the engineer line I never thought I'd, I'd say that but I really have fantastic another another watch I'm gonna <laughs> it's on the radar now but anyway what, what can we do we just you know just, just when we thought we were out. Comments, queries, thoughts, opinions, all the rest of it, please down below in the comments. I love hearing what you guys have to say. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to give this a like if you enjoyed it and found it useful. It really does help me. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.